I think it's fair to say uh, that Dungannon is definitely not known for its links with India, but that's about to, un to change uh, with the unveiling of uh, this plaque uh, to or the statue to the Ungannon born uh, sister Eva Dita. Um, I'll be honest, I'm from Cookstown, the centre of the universe. <laughs> so um, I don't know much uh, about um, what's uh, happening in my neighbouring towns. Um, so when I became uh, a councillor and the three councils joined together, uh, Cookstown, Dungannon, and Mackerfeld, um, it's unbelievable uh, the amount of um, well known people. Uh, that we have within the new Mid Ulster uh, Council District. Um, so I took it upon myself um, to read um, about um, the sister. And it's a f fascinating story, I have to say, um, and one which I believe deserves to be told. And when better to do it than now when we're about to celebrate the 150th anniversary of her birth in County Tyrone and today, uh, which is also in the in Independence Day. Uh, born Margaret Elizabeth Noble in 1867, she spent her early life here and firmly believed that service to mankind was true service to God. Reading um, about her, um, i seen that her father was a, a Methodist minister. So as a Methodist myself, uh, it, it actually adds to this uh, occasion as well. And her given Indian name, uh, which means dedicated to God, could not be more fitting reflect that commitment. Of course her commitment was demonstrated in much more than words. She was an educator opening a school for girls in Calcutta in 1898, seeking to teach those who were deprived of even basic schooling, working tirelessly to bring about improvements to the lives of Indian women and trying to bridge the gap between caste distinctions in Indian society. She was also an intellectual, an author, and an active supporter of the cause of Indian independence. She was and is, in short, one of Indian's heroines, and I hope that this statue will ensure that her contribution to India and its people will be remembered with pride here in her hometown, as the woman who, on her headstone, is credited with giving her all to India. I also hope that her service and humility will inspire here as much as it continues to do in her adopted town or her adopted home. Could I once again thank you very much uh, for inviting me along today. I'm really sorry but I have to leave because I have two more engagements um, after this. I also work full time so my employer is very flexible thankfully. So could I once again wish you very well and thank you very much for the invitation. Yes. Yes. Thank you very much for your kind message and all the hospitalities from the council. Can I now request the Honourable Chairperson, Swami Sargalakanandaji and Swami Purnandaji come and uh, unveil the, uh, the sculpture of Sister Vedita, please. Thank you. Today is a very special day indeed. 
It is India's Independence Day. It is Rishi Aurobindo's birthday also. And from today onwards, this is the day for Sister Nivedita as she comes back to her home. A small sculpture was unveiled here today in her very birthplace. The sculpture may be small, but the history is huge, as it is only the beginning of a great Nivedita journey on her 150th anniversary. We'll listen today from our guest speakers about the significance. So without further ado, let us start the program with a patriotic song. The song will be played by Neville there, and then we will follow that later on. I'll explain the meaning of the song, uh, as this is uh, a, a patriotic song. It actually praises motherland. Bhakti Chandu Chattopadhyay composed the song Vande Matram in an inspired moment. Rabindranath Tagore sang it, setting a glorious tune to it, and it was left to the genius of Sri Aurobindo to interpret the deeper meaning of the song, out of which India received the philosophy of a new nationalism. Only the first stanza is taken as our national song considering the sentiments of all the religions prevail in India. Vande Mataram Vande Mataram Sujalam Sufalam Malayaja Shitalam Shastra Shamalam Mataram Mother, I bow to thee, reach with thy hurrying strings, bright with orchard blaze, cool with thy wings of delight, Dark fields, waving, mother of might, mother free. Shukra Jyotsna, Pulakita Yamini, Fulla Kusumita, Drumadala Shofini, Suhasini, Subadhura Bhashini, Sukhadam Varadam Mataram. Glory of moonlight rains, over thy branches and lordly strains, clad in thy blossoming trees, mother. Giver of ease, laughing low and sweet. Mother, I kiss thy feet. Speaker sweet and low. Mother, to thee I bow. Now this is the praise of our motherland, any motherland. It can be India or Ireland or even United Kingdom, any country that gives us water, sky and soil. So can we ask, um, can I ask Nebel to play, the, play this music and we all sing together. Thank you for joining me in this song. If you like, you are most welcome to join and I will request you to join in the song. Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank you, Swamiji, for the peace prayers. Now there will be floral tributes so the, the, so the audience can be involved. And Swamiji will explain about the uh, floral tribute. Swami Purnanandaji, please. So the original idea is really, was really to take these flowers and offer them as a tribute to Sister Nivedita, who we know is not present in the statue or anything like that. But of course, in Northern Ireland, we are aware of people's sensitivities. And so we don't think that this is to be idol worship or anything like that. It's just uh, when you take a flower, you mentally can put it in your heart and think of Sister Nivedita, her ideal qualities, her love for humanity, and the flower is a symbol of love, and so offering that now, uh, just uh, mentally, accompanying it with physical action. So, um, what I would do then is, uh, if you, those who want, yeah, can come and take a flower, yeah, and offer. I will start with me, and then maybe. everyone for sharing uh, a tribute to Sister Nivedita. Our next speaker is Reverend Swami Sarvalakanamuti, a senior monk of Ramakrishna order and the spiritual director of Khan Ramakrishna Mission, Mumbai. We have requested Swami to speak on Sister Nivedita's contribution on Indian freedom movement because I know personally everybody wants to know Ramakrishna Mission's view on Sister Nivedita's contribution in Sahana Babatu Sahana Bhunatu Sahari Vyam Karavabahe Tejvasvina Badhi Tamastuma Vibhi Shabahe Om Shanti 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 Distinguished guest present here I feel myself blessed 
to be here, the holy birthplace of Sister Nivedita, who was a great lover of mankind. It is a very fortunate coincidence that two months back I decided to visit London, Ireland and Scotland when I wrote a letter to Sri Siddhartha Sen that I would like to visit Ireland and particularly which is very dear to my heart that is Nivedita's birthplace, Duncanan. Immediately Siddhartha Sen wrote me, Swamiji, we are very delighted that you are coming to Duncanan. And on the 15th of August, India's Independence Day, a small sculpture of Nivedita will be unveiled and we are happy to invite you to be the guest of honor the today's function. And today I am here, standing before you, to speak something about the nationalistic spirit of Sister Nivedita. The Sister Nivedita visited India on the response of the call given by Swami Vivekananda. Vivekananda, when met his sister Nivedita, at that time he was, he was not sister Nivedita, but Margaret Elizabeth Noble, later on she became sister Nivedita, the name given by Swami Vivekananda, when he initiated Nivedita into Brahmacharya, at that time she, he gave this name to Nivedita, Nivedita means dedicated one. And he visited India on invitation of, of Swami Vivekananda and he, she realized, Nivedita realized that if India has to rise, then India must have independence. Any race or country which is not independent cannot develop or cannot progress. So Nivedita first tried to unite the Indian masses to raise their voice against the British government so that India get independence. In those days, all freedom fighters, starting from Aurobindo to Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose, were inspired by Sister Nivedita. The revolutionary member, that great revolutionary Sri Aurobindo Bose, I, the pamphlet and about his life is here, you can see. When Aravinda was returned from England, and Raja Maharaja of Barodra, Shivaji Rao Gaikwad, appointed Aravinda Ghos as a professor in Baroda University. And at that time, Nivedita was touring all India just to know about India, just to know the pulse of the people of India. And uh, at last Nivedita came to Barodra and Sivaji Gaikwad sent Sri Aurobindo to receive Nivedita in a railway station at Baroda. That then 
Aravinda Ghosh came in contact with Nivedita very closely and Nivedita went back to Calcutta and after a few days Aravinda also left this Baroda University and joined this revolutionary movement in India, freedom, freedom struggle in India. And afterwards, Aurobindo Ghosh was very much inspired by Sister Nivedita and became great revolutionary in those days. Nivedita tried to infuse nationalistic spirit with India and Indian masses and his conception of nationalism was to weaken the national consciousness in all fields, in the field of religion, in the field of art, science and culture and uh, how Nibirita inspired all the freedom fighters in those days. All of you know that Swami Vivekananda was also a great, great freedom fighter, though he was not in the frontliner. From the behind, he also inspired all the freedom fighters in those days. Not a single freedom fighter in those days who was not inspired by the teachings of Swami Vivekananda, the patriotic spirit of Swami Vivekananda. Just I tell you one incident when Mahatma Gandhi, the father of the nation, great freedom fighter, went to Velmar, the headquarters of Ramakrishna Matan Mission in, near Calcutta. Many people assembled here that Mahatma Gandhi has come to Velmar. And the assembled people requested Mahatma Gandhi to tell something. Then Mahatma Gandhi said, What can I tell? Standing in the holy precinct of Belur Mat, this much I can say that I had love for my motherland, India, but after reading the life and teachings of Sami Vivekananda, my love for India, my motherland, has become thousandfold. So, dear friends, Sami Vivekananda was gave Vivekananda gave very kind of inspiration to all of all the freedom fighters in those days. The Nivedita's contribution is immense towards the freedom struggle and how Nivedita inspired and got freedom of India. Nivedita's Life, if you read, you'll find that from morning to evening, how he she used to engage herself in the freedom fighting struggle or freedom struggle in those days. Not only Aravinda Ghosh, but there are many freedom fighters in those days in India were inspired by Sister Nivedita. Nivedita came in contact, close contact with Rabindranath Tagore, the great poet. And Rabindranath Tagore recognized the great qualities in Nivedita. And that quality is the spirit of nationalism and patriotism. That is why Rabindranath Tagore gave very proper name to Nivedita that is Loka Mata Nivedita, the mother of the people. So time is short. Nivedita's contribution particularly to the freedom struggle is immense, there is no doubt about it. 
but uh, very unfortunate in India, even in Ireland, the people that are aware of the great contribution or her dedication and devotion towards the upliftment of the masses, whether it's Indian masses or Ireland masses, that doesn't matter. But his concern was how to raise the hapless condition of the masses of the common people. And that for that, Nibidita worked day and night. But today, we are going to celebrate the 150th birth anniversary of Nibidita in India as well as other parts of the globe. And I hope this is a great opportunity to apprise the people about the great contribution, about her dedication and devotion to the masses, so that people will be inspired, people will come to know about Nivedita, and people will dedicate themselves for the service of the mankind, which is very, very important. Because nowadays we are be becoming very selfish and we are not bothered about the welfare of the common masses. But Dimitri the wanted that everybody should dedicate oneself for the upliftment of the masses, common masses. So that is why Swami Vivekananda also wanted that everybody must be unselfishness, unselfish. Because Nimedita assisted uh, Swami Vivekananda writing a letter. With this letter, I will conclude my speech. Swami Vivekananda writing a wonderful letter to Maharaja of Mysore. Very touching letter, very important letter. He is writing a letter to Maharaja of Mysore, noble, my dear noble prince. The life is sought. The vanities of life are transitory. They alone lips who lives for others. Rest are more dead than alive. Dear friends, unfortunately we are only living for ourselves. But one must, one should live for others. Then only you can live properly. Otherwise, uh, Swamiji has said, the rest are more dead than alive, though you are alive, but dead. So doing something for others, it is very important, and we must do. That is, the Imeditas, these are great teachings towards, to all the mankind. So dear friends, I am very happy, personally I am very happy, that I am here today, in this uh, August function, and I would like to appeal to all of you to spread the message of Sister Nivedita, particularly life and teachings to the people at large, so that people can know about her, not only knowing, but will get inspired by the life and teachings of Nivedita. And also, people can dedicate their life towards the welfare of the common masses. So I must thank uh, the organizer, particularly the lady who is sitting before me, James, no? Yes, particularly that lady, because I cannot all the time pronounce this name, you know, this is a foreign name, you know, so don't mind. So, I heard that he, he has been doing research on Nivedita and she knows about Nivedita more than us because he's doing research on Nivedita and he actually he is the woman behind this function and organized, he, he organized this function with the help of others. 
so it is just a starting point just is a starting point of the journey and uh, all of you must observe the nivedita's 150th birthday anniversary all over the ireland particularly when where he was he was born and uh, in india also already ramakrishna mission has started observing 150th birth anniversary of sister nivedita and this uh, 150th birth anniversary will be observed for more than 2 years in india and you also observe sister nivedita's 150th birth anniversary at least for one year so in these few words i would like to conclude my speech and really indeed i am very much happy to see this place the birth place of nivedita and particularly for this august function i would like to conclude my speech with a famous vedic prayer that is sarve bhavantu sukhina sarve santu niramaya may all be happy may all be healthy namaskar dhanyawad thank you so much for this enlightening speech i must repeat that yes jean is the lady uh, nivedita is working through her now she is uh, the nivedita of dungand now so a uh, uh, formal thanks definitely i can't thank jean enough uh, we will uh, talk about i have to thank so many other people as well so we'll keep it at the end but at this point i wanted to introduce uh, the man behind the sculpture the artist mr shankar das from india before we begin another speech so we'll see whether he is there already in the skype so i have to um, you know start the skype on the sound on and then if if he is there he deserves to be introduced i think so let us uh, just take a pause at the moment and try the skype then we can put the sound on and we'll see we um, is it possible to speak to mr shekhar das is is he present there here is shekhar das sarada he, he wants to say something thank you so much apni kichu bolte chan ami ami ebe translate kore debo apni bolun apnar kichu bolar thakle apni ekta kotha bolte chan amar khub bhalo lagche ajker dine nishesh nishesh sarada sarkar apnader antorik shubhechha amar pranam amar bhalobasha amar apnader shoddha janai apnara je ei rokom ekta sundor byabostha korte okane er ekta boro protishthane আমি খুব আনন্দ পাচ্ছি খুব ভালো লাগবে আমার আচ্ছা ধন্যবাদ আপনাকে হি ইজ সেইং দ্যাট হি ইজ ভেরি হ্যাপি দ্যাট ইট ইজ অর্গানাইজড এন্ড হিজ কালচার ইজ ইন আ বিগ প্লেস অবভিয়াসলি ইটস আ বিগ প্লেস সিস্টার নিবেদিতাস বার্থ প্লেস এনিথিং কান বি এনি বিগার দ্যান দ্যাট সো হি ইজ ভেরি হ্যাপি এন্ড হি ইজ জাস্ট এক্সপ্রেসিং হিজ থ্যাঙ্কফুলনেস টু অল অফ আস স্পেশালি টু ডাঙ্গান এন্ড কাউজাব ইন দ্য মিড আফ দ্য কাউন্সিল and obviously especially to jean mckinnis thank you uh, so much and uh, uh, so we we will carry on with our speeches thank you apni ekhane thakben to ekhon kichu kor amader program aro cholbe ebong apnake pore aro i to thank you okay thank you dhonnobad ha thank you our next speaker is revered swami purnanand ji River Swami Purnanand ji is the spiritual director of ARE Vedanta Society operating in Ireland for last 10 years spreading the message of Swami ji part of the Ramakrishna Vivekananda traditions and he was initiated by Swami Vireshanand ji 10th president of Ramakrishna order that he is uh, we requested Swami ji to speak on the topic of sister nivedita relevance to the young generation nowadays because my son often asks me mom this lady passed away 150 100 years ago uh, why we should know about her so this is the question i am putting to swami purnanand ji to speak about i don't think i can answer him 
good enough, but I think uh, Swamiji can. Thank you, Swamiji. This is full, that is full. From fullness, you only get fullness, is the purport of the prayer. So, uh, thank you for that topic. Normally, but it might be a bit wasted here, I don't know, I normally introduce myself by denying that my name is Jerry Adams and that I'm in any way a member of the Orange Order. So we begin with that as a small icebreaker. So youth, yes, well, it's a very appropriate topic since you're all so youthful. I can see that. It's very appropriate that we are celebrating on this Indian Independence Day the life and of Sister Navidita, our Margaret Elizabeth Noble, born here in Duncanon. My thanks and acknowledgments to revered Swami Sarvalogananda for his visit and also his speech, for Sharada Basu, for. Huh? Oh, yes, okay. So, we register that to a mistake, never mind, move on. But uh, your inspiration, in fact, we can't say your inspiration, we can say that all our inspiration is divine inspiration for organizing uh, or being the, the thought behind this. And of course, we also acknowledge and thank uh, the uh, chair Councillor um, uh, Wilson for honoring us with his presence and we also would like to honor the sculptor here who looks like a young man himself but what skill and love he's put into this and very appropriate because Sister Nevadita had a weapon it was the pen that was her main weapon and her words so it's wonderful to celebrate this on Indian Independence Day, daughter of Ireland and honorary daughter of India. And in some ways she was more a daughter of India than anywhere else. Mother of the people, as Swami Sarvalokananda had mentioned. The, sometimes we speak about personalities and we don't really know them. And so there's a wonderful summary of what Sister Nivedita would have looked like. Don't forget Swami Vivekananda had already made a kind of portrait of her, looking for somebody who was educated, somebody who was sincere, somebody who, was, who had immense love. And then he ends off all his list of descriptions and attributes by saying, above all, somebody with Celtic blood. And we wonder what that means. Somebody who is feisty, somebody who is strong. And Swami Vivekananda himself said, India is not yet ready, her women are not yet ready. And so it remains the task of a foreigner to do this upliftment of women. Why? Because how do you uplift women whether it's in India or any other third world country or developing country, is through education. That's the only way. And so there's a wonderful portrait that is given. This is by Patrick Geddes, who knew her well. The whole personality of Nivedita, her face, her voice, her changing moods and daily life, were ever expressing the alternating reaction of outward environment and inward spirit, which goes on throughout the individual and social life. She was open at once to the concrete and the abstract, to the scientific and the philosophic, and her many moods were in perpetual interplay, sparkling with keen observation, with humorous or poetic interpretation, or opal-like suffused with mystic light aflame with moral fire. All came out in her talks, her occasional lectures, each a striking improvisation, now in gentle persuasiveness, leading her audience into sympathetic understanding, or even approval, or 
some aspect of Indian life unknown or perhaps repellent before or again, bursting into indignant flash and veritable thunder upon our complacent and supercilious British Philistinism. This was somebody who knew her well. And we can just imagine this feisty, courageous person. So what is the relevance to youth? You have to be a rebel. Not a rebel without a cause, but a rebel with a cause. It takes great strength and individuality of spirit to go against the trend. So she was born, as the counselor had mentioned, she was born into a Methodist family. Those who are aware of Christianity will <coughs> understand these distinctions. Methodism or Wesleyanism really is a uh, to do with preaching, to do with passion, to do with the ordinary folk, giving sermons in the open fields, not in churches. This was a revolutionary kind of thing, although not so much when you see the life of Jesus. And then all her education, congregationalists, you may not know the distinction, but they were the people who championed things like the suffrage movement, things like abolitionism, and so on. A certain spirit of freedom. And it is well known that her family were great advocates of freedom, national freedom, in a different way. So Sister Nivedita was always young, was always a youth. Bear in mind, only 44 years, or as I like to say, 44 free trips around the Zodiac. And she left with spending her entire life dedicated to India, although in some in summary, physically, she would have only been in India about six years. But her endeavor would have been 12 years old. From her pen came prolific writings. Carly the Mother was her first book. The Web of Indian Life, Cradle Tales of Hinduism. And Patrick Geddes tells us portrays a picture of her sitting on the floor surrounded by children, kindergarten children, reading the cradles, cradle tales of Hinduism. For her education, in terms of her own education, in terms of her career in education, she had a revolutionary attitude. Education was not formal classroom. Education was expressive covering every manner of subject you could think of, and employing state-of-the-art educational techniques of her day. And so she applied that in India when she got the message. In fact, her visit to India in 1898 was really delayed because she first met Swami Vivekananda 1895. What was the delay? Swami Vivekananda put her off, even though she was ardent and wanted to go. She was the eldest in a family, and the oldest is always a kind of leader of some kind. But like everybody else, when we see what are the most important things in our life, we do that as we get older. We see all these milestones. Most of us can divide our life up into fragments. It would be up to the age of, say, 12, and then from 12, high school, college, and so on. And so if we look at Sister Nuredita's life, we see remarkable tragedies. Where we, first of all, we see that her father goes off studying theology, the Westgate Cottage. Then we find, at the age of 10, she loses him. And then, of course, she doesn't get deserted, but she goes into a school, boarding school, from the age of 10. And we can't imagine how that must have felt. But we know that all these things are to our benefit. Everything you register as a tra tragedy is, in fact, an open gap where something good can go through. And so it happened for her. 
she became independent minded. She got all the values of her education. Even the rebellious attitudes against Christian doctrinal uh, uh, straitjackets, if you will, which she rebelled against. Then, of course, during her teaching career, she had two tragedies. She fell in love with a Welshman. The Welshman died. Another one deserted her. I'm not saying a Welshman deserted her, but I'm not, not laying anything on the Welsh people. And so with this disturbed kind of mind, she started looking, seeking, and it was with this frame of mind that she met Swami Vivekananda. Of course, she was already well known when she met the Swami. She was well known in London circles. She was a prolific writer, contributed to magazines. And so her skill with the pen was already well known. Swami Vivekananda must have seen something special in her. Now, her birth in Danganan, I don't really see as a starting point. There's a whole series of events. And if we study the Vedanta philosophy, we'll understand that life is a kind of play, a drama. Sri Ram Krishna gave us these two aspects of the non-dualistic philosophy, Nitya on the one side, Leela on the other. And if we take this life as a Leela, as a game, we'll have a sporting, challenging attitude. We'll fly in the face of all these challenges. And this is the characteristic of youth and youthfulness. To be young at heart, to be young in body, to be young in mind, all of these characteristics and energies channeled into something that is useful. So while formal education equips us with skills and talents for our careers and for an opportunity to gain a place in our social environment, something more is necessary. Some character building is necessary. Some aspect which is necessary for good citizenship is necessary. Where to get these qualities from? We get them from our own life. And it is these tragedies, so-called, that become gems, treasures for us, because they make us stronger. And it is no accident that the very first chapter of the Srimad Bhagavad Gita tells us that we start our spiritual journey with despondency, depression, but we lift ourselves out of it. passages from the Srimad Bhagavad Gita, let him raise himself up by himself, let him not drag himself down. So we raise ourselves up. What should youth learn? Raise yourself up. Raise yourself up by yourself. Don't be dependent on anybody. You alone are responsible for your own future. You are own responsible, according to the Vedanta philosophy, for your present condition also. So why will we change the world? We'll change the world and be a world mover, as Sister Navadita was, by taking all our skills and talents, as she herself did, and turning them toward a spirit of service a spirit of generosity for the good and welfare of all mankind. She did it in a mere 44 years, turned all her talents, keeping Swami Vivekananda's inspiration behind at all times, understanding that the message was always on track, even though it seems not to have been. What was this message? Education. What was this message? Freedom. Freedom in every sense of the word. What was the message of Swami Vivekananda? Upliftment of women. And when we look at Sister Nodita's life and view it in the framework of a game or a play, we have to go back to something she herself wrote in the Master as I saw him. And she wrote this, The temple of Dakshinaswara, she said, was built by the wealthy Rani Rasmani. A woman, she says, of the fisherwoman or the fisherperson caste. 
and in the year 1853, Sri Ramakrishna took up residence there as one of the Brahmins attached to its service. These were facts, she says, which had impressed the mind of Vivekananda even more deeply perhaps than he himself ever knew. Because, you see, as she points out, if there had been no Ramakrishna, there would have been no Vivekananda. If there were no Vivekananda, there would have been no Western message. If there had been no Western message, we would not be here today thinking about it. But that was in the beginning. The beginning was a fisherwoman was inspired to build a temple. Now, all the great Mahabharata, Bhagavad Gita derived from it, all the arrangement of the Upanishads, all the uh, yeah, arrangement of the Vedas, the Bhagavatam, all of this penned and uh, elaborated and uh, propagated by Rishi Vyasa. Rishi Vyasa was the son of a fisherwoman. Look at this parallel. So a new age, we, could this be a new age whereby Fisher person connection comes in again and inspires generation after generation. So she continues with this. She says, A woman of the people had been, in a sense, the mother of that whole movement of which all the disciples of the Master formed parts. Humanly speaking, she says, without the temple of Dakshinasar, there had been no Ramakrishna. Without Ramakrishna, no Vivekananda. And without Vivekananda, no Western mission. And the whole story rested on the building, erected on the Ganga side, a few miles above Calcutta, just before the middle of the 19th century. And that was the outcome of the devotion of a rich woman of the lower castes, a thing that under a purely Hindu government, she writes, bound to the maintenance of Brahmin supremacy, could never have been possible as the Swami himself was not slow to point out. From this indeed, from this is inferred the importance of non-cognizance of caste by centralized governments in India. What a wonderful revolutionary way of talking and how profound. And so, what should youth do? There are three things, three things which you can describe as three Fs. Faith. We have great examples of faith in youth in the literature. We have the Nachiketa of the Katupanishad. We have that Nachiketa defying death. We have the example of Dhruva. We have the example of uh, pra uh, Prahlada. All of these great examples are there, which tell us that we should have faith. Faith in what? Faith in ourselves, primarily what we mean by faith in ourselves. Faith in ourselves in depth, where the Atman resides. With that strength, all these other things get expressed. Physical strength, emotional strength, psychological strength all around. And so faith, faith in ourselves. Faith in ourselves equates to faith in God. And then fortitude. There has to be fortitude, courage and ultimately freedom. A bit like if you want to play a musical instrument for the first time. When you hesitantly go and see, doubtingly, can I do this, can I do this? And then the next stage is, you persist, I will do it. And then finally, you have the freedom to play any tune you want and roam over the keyboards at your will. And then three Ds you can register, desire, determination, dedication. Desire for things of this world can easily be transmuted into desire for God or desire for the highest truth. And then it requires determination. Determination, that is, when you fail, get up, do it again. You'll always fail, you'll always get up, you'll always do it again. And finally, Nivedita, that is dedication. You require dedication. With these things, with these tools, you can equip yourself. How does this relate to Nivedita? 
she was the embodiment of this. Her life wasn't all happiness. There were disappointments. There were moments when she felt rejected by her own guru. There were times like that, not knowing that he was just withdrawing from the world. And then in a meeting with her, she understood and was delighted again. My guru loves me. He's not rejecting me. He's not being impersonal with me. He is just simply withdrawing, detaching himself from this particular drama, this scene of life. That's all. And so, what can youth achieve? Tremendous amount. How will New Edita inspire us? How is it relevant to us today? It is relevant to every youth needs to be a world mover. Not for the sake of social change, but the sake of all these qualities that Vivekananda himself saw in Sister Navidita. Sincerity, well-educated, well education is very important. Educate to the highest, express your full, full potential. We, I often tell the small children, I told this in London also, I'll tell it again. I often tell children, please look at your fingerprints, look at your hands. You have fingerprints? And all the children look at, say, they nod. They think I'm a little crazy. Never mind. I say, humor me. You see, those fingerprints were never, be, you know, were never seen before you were born. When you die, they will never be seen again. This is your individuality. This is the mark of your Sutarma. There is something in life only you can do, no one else can do, with your assemblage of talents and skills. Do it. Unfold it. Be part of evolution means unfolding. Unfold your full potential until you arrive at the place of peace that passeth all understanding. And so, uh, I'm aware of the time. I don't want to take any more of your time, but I'll just make some concluding remarks. Uh, and maybe quote a little bit from uh, a poem I wrote, which is a standard one I normally bring out when I'm flummoxed for things to say. So, I won't repeat the whole... You want me to repeat the whole poem? No. You know you know how long it is. Oh, you're nodding. Good. One, one approval is enough. So, Celtic Lioness. She had from early childhood days an inner urge to serve the poor and coax young minds toward the best. New thoughts to schools she did apply. Desire for deeper truth did draw an Eastern master in strange guise. In refined ladies' drawing room, he too did coax the seeking minds. More study still to firm belief, his words were called to greater life, where love and skill will yield reward and greater need to all be served. In Eastern place, with keenness fresh, she learned and loved the curious ways. The sights and sounds of simple life took hold of her in holy land. With blessings from Mother Divine and Master's guiding, wakening light, she entered sacred inner cave of subtle heart and God profound. Now dedicated life toward her task, she sought to serve where'er she could to raise Shakti in young and old, and so restore great nations past. If he was seen as Lion King, then she was daughter Lioness, a brilliant, a brilliant fire that warmly shone on faces of the yearning young. When God is seen in ragged dress, and plague and famine roam the streets, worship him, hands, heart, and soul, and heal his sores, soothe her distress. Care not for dirt, disease, and death, or cutting racial scorn that hurts. A thousand years of heel on head have forced our mother unto this. But Kali Black is same mother, whose frantic limbs announce the dawn, whose mouth and loving tower devour, whose cry is one day martyrdom. Then be mad with desperate love, for sacred soil of sacred land, 
where saints and sages did abound, strong rulers wise defended well. Is the antiquity of culture dead, where art and science made a home, and Indian eyes see newborn truths, as much as Athens, Crete, or Rome? Take courage from a Celtic bairn, whose gift unfolds the strength well hid. Empress queen can reign from far, but victory not when lords oppress. Now stay in cool of mountain air. You gave your all without a rest. Your body spent and made its mark. Your words inspired the best of men. The children sing and fetters gone. Viceroy shamed and you have won. The eternal prize of timeless peace. To meet with joy, Gadai Naran. His word came forth. Let Parad rise. In five decades, the shackles snap. Now teach the world all paths are true. No need to hate when oneness is. And that is the impact of Sister Nodita. Why all this drama unfolded from Rani Raswani? It was so that India and her ancient heritage, her eternal truth, could uplift humanity as a whole. Not just Indians, but the humanity. Seven billion people to uplift them so they can find their own freedom. Om Shanti 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 Shanti. Thank you, Swamiji, for such an inspired speech. I'm sure we all got a lot, particularly the younger ones, and especially my son. I know I couldn't explain enough. Um, before we go into our next speech, I want to introduce some people in India who are also working in uh, the Nivedita awareness. Um, and one of them is Mr. Rantidev Sen Gupta. He is a very famous journalist, very renowned journalist of a Bengali daily. He wrote um, a biography of Sister Nivedita and Jean and McGuinness and Swami Purnanandaji. Uh, kindly wrote their preface, um, the those books preface as well. Um, so I want to introduce uh, Mr. Radhidev Sen Gupta through Skype uh, for any future links. Uh, they are also working on the same cause. So if uh, we want to work together, it will be a future link. So uh, can I ask? And there, there is another gentleman, uh, giant. Uh, he is so nibbled the lover. Uh, he's a, a really, truly dedicated to Sister Nivedita and he deserves to be introduced as well. So can I ask uh, from Skype, uh, Mr. Rantidev Sen Gupta to be here, please, and um, join the after, afterwards, before we move on to the, uh, the, our final speech. Um, can you turn that Skype on? Hello? Uh, can you come in the front of the camera, please? Uh, can you please come? To the front. Computer to Guril in or to the. Can you come up? Up now, Mukta Nakaratsana. Hello. I like to know. I like to ask him. I like to ask him. Camera to Computer to Guril in Nala. Camera Shamanana. Mr. Randhidev Sen Gupta, they have started something called Sister Nivedita Mission for, and it is mainly uh, the purpose of 150th year. But you have to say that you have to translate or you have to English. You have to say that you have to say that. All the members of Sister Nivedita Mission, we are here. All the members of Sister Nivedita Mission, we are here. We are watching your program. All the members of Sister Nivedita Mission are here. Yes, you have to say something about it. Congratulations to you and all of Dhrindavan. He is congratulating. What do you say? What is that? Yeah, you have to say something about it. Swami Purnanandaji is asking you to stand up and speak. He is a very good speaker. He speaks very well. Yes, he is a very good speaker. He is a very good speaker. He speaks a lot of your addresses, a lot of audiences. हाँ बोलो ना अपनी बांग्ला तो बोलो ना उन्हें कि इकहने बांग्ला बोझे आपने एक तो बांग्ला जो भी किसी बोला था कि बोलो आपने आपको काज करें से एक तो कहने आमदे अपना काजे का तो बोलो 
Here is our, all the members of Sister Rivita Mission. We are here. We are in Oshinda, Oshin, Oshin, Oshinda. They are all very uh, big dignitaries. We are in Oshinda, Oshin, Kumar, Mission. We are here. 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 We are Namaskar. I should call the Nivedita Army in Calcutta. Sister Nivedita Mission, key cards could say to Bolga, no mother. They are they're working something, so I'm ex ex uh, asking him to explain what they're doing. Joy Namaskar. 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 Uh, he is the most dedicated person that I know so far about Sister Nivedita. Truly passionate. Can you see us? Jean McGinn, as you know her very well, don't you? Do you want to say something? Uh, Sister Nivedita, uh, Sister Nivedita, 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 Sister So they have to write about Sister Nivedita. They will be the winners. At least about ten children will get uh, all the uh, everything paid for their education for at least one year. Um, so they are trying to organize that. So about ten children will get Nivedita scholarship. Okay, but it's a very small endeavor, but it's definitely a big in 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 sense of uh, you know everything is done so far. Okay. Um, uh, Rontida, uh -huh. can you come on the, uh, in the front just once more before I go into the next speech? Rontida Sen Gupta, please, once more. We have to go with Kerala and corresponding to the people in Okay, um, I can't hear what, what you're saying. Anything, uh, okay, okay, can we move on to our next speech? <coughs> I think I, we can't hear. Uh, much now at the moment. Yeah. 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 A devoted community worker in UK and India, uh, and, in, and he is the secretary of Aurobindo Society in uh, in the United Kingdom. Uh, apart from that, he has got so many social activities. Um, he's an exceptional Bengali. Generally, uh, Bengali people from 
uh, India, they have very uh, little community uh, contributions. But uh, to me, Rinalda is definitely an exceptional person. Um, so, uh, uh, and when I asked him that, uh, would you like to go to Dangana for uh, this occasion, uh, within a second he said, yes, yes, I will. So uh, this, this shows the dedication and uh, commitment to the community as well as to come for any good cause. So um, my request to Rinalda today to talk about Sister Nivedita and Rishi Aurobindo because he is the Aurobindo Society Secretary as well. But yeah, obviously uh, anything he wants to speak to us. Thank you Rinalda. Can you come on the stage please? We started in the morning, I thought I'll say welcome all of you, good morning, but this is good afternoon now. But outside is not afternoon, it's still bright sunny morning today. So, Mr. Councillor Wilson, who is the mayor or uh, so sometimes can be mayor or speaker, speaker of uh, Mid Ulster Council, Swarbha Lokananda Samiji, Purnananda Samiji, friends, dignitaries, ladies and gentlemen. Today is 15th August. We are unveiling the statue of Sister Nivedita on her 150th birthday. It's a great occasion. You know, today is in Indian, Indian Independence Day. Happened to be the 15th August is also Sri Aurobindo's birthday. It's a great honor and privilege. Indeed, a good association with all of you to be here present to commemorate this unique occasion. After the in-depth speeches of Sami Sarvalokananda ji, Purnananda ji, it is very difficult to fulfill in their footsteps. What I have done in my speech today to give you the background of pre-independence, renaissance of India, and who influenced Sister Nivedita and some anecdote about Sister Nivedita and at the end I'm leaving some books on Sri Aurobindo for you to take. It's not many, few, few of them. As you know, Margaret no Elizabeth Noble was the great famous daughter of Danganan. You definitely, you will be proud. Swami Purnanandaji mentioned about in Celtic poetry about her life and story. As you know, India was under foreign rule for seven, eight hundred years. First under Mughals and then under British from 1757. Mother India was oppressed by foreign rulers, by foreign rulers, so the whole world was deprived of our Vedantic eternal knowledge of peace for the humanity. Indian Renaissance to make Mother India great was started by Raja Ram Mohan Roy, social reformer and the great thinker of Indian religion. After his death in the year 1833, a divine prophet was born in the year 1836 in a Bengal village by the name of Gadadhar. He was the re reincarnation of Lord Vishnu from the trinity of Hindu trinity of Brahma, Vishnu and Mysore. He was not an educated man, but he could give Vedantic knowledge in simple language. He was a man with a divine influence. And later he became, he was known as Sri Sri Ramakrishna Dev. Long after his birth, Mother India gave birth to a few famous sons, Rabindranath Tagore in 1861, Narendra Dotto in 1863, and Aurobindo Ghosh in 1872. They all became famous persons in different fields of Tales to make Mother India proud. This is the start of famous Renaissance period. When Sri Sri Ramakrishna Dev 
met Narendranath for the first time, he said that you are born as Lord Narayan in this earth to meet me and do some work on behalf of me for the humanity on this earth. Narendranath is later known as Swami Vivekananda. Rabindranath was born on 8th May 1861 and became Nobel Laureate, Poet and Philosopher. He wrote the famous book, The Religion of Man, and then on 15th August 1872, Sri Aurobindo was born. He was a poet, philosopher, yogi, and a saint. This is the renaissance of Mother India after the death of Ram Mohan Roy, awakening of soul of India. The presence of Mother India in this world is for the humanity. Freedom of, freedom of India on 15th August 1947 was the beginning of the freedom of the whole world. Rabindranath, Vivekananda and Aurobindo were working together for the progress of the people of India and the humanity at large. They helped each other to produce huge sums of work for the benefit of humanity in the fields of education, health, and moral. To serve the humanity was the divine order, the Adesh of Sri Sri Ramakrishna to Swami Vivekananda. To fulfill this Adesh, Swamiji came to London, Europe, and United States to spread the gospel of Sri Ramakrishna, Vedantic truth. In one of these visits to London, Swamiji met Miss Margaret Noble, who later known as Sister Nivedita. She came, she came from Ireland when Ireland was one country. There was a common thread of freedom of both countries, India and Ireland. Nivedita used to attend all Samiji's lecture in London and then she was attracted to Indian Vedantic philosophy. She was a great admirer of, admirer of Samiji and decided to become the disciple of Swami Vivekananda to work with him for the humanity. Nivedita was also aware of Sri Aurobindo's work for the Mother India and for the human race. Sri Aurobindo was put into jail at Alipur for his Indian freedom movement. He was the Sri Aurobindo um, the freedom movement. He had vision of Swami Vivekananda and the others of Lord Krishna in the jail. He was acquitted from the case. After Uttar Pada speech on 30th of May 1909, Sister Nivedita met Sri Aurobindo also and requested him to go to Pondicherry. Sri Aurobindo was a student of Cambridge University. He was a brilliant student and administrator. After the freedom of India, which he knew it was a certain on 15th August 1947, it happened to be his own birthday. He now concentrated his time to work on consciousness and integral yoga. Sister Nivedita was attracted to Sri Aurobindo for his invocation of Mother India. He wrote, O Mother, O Soul of India, Mother who has, who has never forsaken thy children, even in the days of darkest depression, even when they turned away from thy voice, served other masters and dying thee, now when they have arisen and the light is on thy face in this dawn of thy liberation, in this great hour we salute thee, guide us so that the horizon of freedom opening before us may be also a horizon of true greatness and of thy true life in the community of nations. Guide us so that we may be always on the side of great ideals, 
and so to men to thy visage. As a leader in the ways of the Spirit and a friend and the helper of all peoples. That is what attracted Sister Nivedita to Sri Aurobindo's work on spiritualism and make Mother India great. Sri Aurobindo thought through evolution one day Mother India would be the guru of the world with her spiritualism and peace mission. Sri Aurobindo father wrote, It was in religion first that the soul of India awake and trumped. There were always indication, always great forerunners. But it was when the flowers of educated youth of Calcutta bowed down at the feet of an illiterate Hindu ascetic, a self-illuminated ascetic and mystic without a single trace or touch of the alien thought or education upon him that the battle was won. The going forth, Vivekananda, marked out by the Master as the heroic soul destined to take the world between his two hands and change it, was the first visible sign of the world that India was awake not only to survive but to conquer. Once the soul of nation was awake in religion, it was only a matter of time an opportunity for it to throw itself on spiritualism, spiritual and intellectual act activities in the national existence and take possession on them. I can go on and continue with his writing on Vivekananda and the Master Guru Ramakrishna, but as you know, time is short, you are all feeling hungry, we got to go so quickly. Sister Nivedita dedicated her whole life for the service of Mother India, as was advised by Swami Vivekananda. Nivedita never realized that Swamiji would leave this mortal body so early at the age of 39. She could not take this shock in her life. She spent rest of her life for the girls' education by establishing a girls' school in Bagbajar, Calcutta. In conclusion, I would like to mention, as I said at the beginning, two occasions in her life. First, after the death of Samiji, Nivedita requested Guru Brothers that the cloth Samiji was wearing after his death to be kept as a memento as she saw Samiji was changing his cloth for the last time. But she was told that according to Hindu practice, it is not done. But she saw a small piece of cloth from the funeral pyre came flying in the wind towards her. Towards her. How, do you under, how do you understand this? Second, Nivedita was asked a question that, I quote, You know both Sri Ramakrishna and Swami Vivekananda well. But what is the difference between them? Sister Nivedita replied that last 5,000 years what India thought Sri Ramakrishna is the symbol of that but what India would think next 1,500 years the advanced representative of that is Swami Vivekananda. It is up to us how we go forward to follow Mother India. As I said earlier, I brought few books because my talk was based between Sister Nivedita and Sri Aurobindo. Few books, small books, even though you kept a lot of other books there, so you can take that. Thank you for listening. Thank you again. Thank you, Mrinala. That was very nice. Thank you. Poems on women power. Kali, the mother, uh, Swami Purnanandaji, I think, mentioned about the book. This is a famous book written by Sister Nivedita. The theme of Avanti's dance is Kali, the mother. Avanti Chakravarti Mukhopadhyay is a trained classical and contemporary art performer. 
who regularly performs and does workshops in schools and colleges. In addition to that, she is deeply involved in academia, works with Hampshire County Council. Avanti, do you want to say something before you start?
Kali the mother. Now we are coming to the end of the program, but I have to, before we uh, break, I need to say thanks to a lot of people for their selfless devotion. And I will be uh, reading, actually, because I don't want to miss it. So please bear with me. I will start um, uh, reading the thanks. I have to read from the script. Thank you. First of all, I would like to I would like to extend my sincere gratitude. It's not coming. Sincere gratitude towards the honourable chairperson, Mr. Trevor Wilson, of the Mead Ulster Council, and their support and hospitality, and their positive attitude towards Sister Nivedita. In this context, I must mention the priceless help we got from Miss Christine uh, McGowan. Christine McGowan, Neville Thompson, and Kevin, I don't know your surname, Kevin, um, Kevin, and, and all other staff and members of the council, without whom the day's event would not have been possible. A very, very special thanks goes to Jean McGuinness, who has been tirelessly working on Sister Nivedita here in Danganan. To a lot of us in India, she is Nivedita of Danganan, as I said. Uh, her work is, her work is truly inspiring for all the Nivedita followers in the globe. It seems Sister Nivedita is working through her. Today's event, again, would not have been possible at all um, without her help, guidance, and support. Thank you, Jean, and Larry as well. Thank you so much. I wish to thank Reverend Swami Sarvalatanandaji for coming all the way from India and gracing this occasion with your presence and uh, the, the uh, enlightening speech that we got from you. Thank you so much. A huge thanks must also go to Reverend Swami Purnanandaji for all the dedication and work you are doing towards the recognition of Sister Nivedita in Ireland as well as today's event. Uh, because everything, I was stuck, I was asking Swamiji, Swamiji, should I say this? And he said, he corrected me or said, yes, this is fine. So thank you so much, Swamiji. And the speech was absolutely brilliant. Thank you. There are a few more people I would like to thank. Uh, now, without their help also, it will not be possible at all. It's Mr. Siddhartha Sen and Mrs. Anita Sen for their support constantly uh, in this matter. All the time. Thank you so much for that. Mr. Mrinal Choudhury, I spoke about him. Ex-Mayor of Harrow came all the way from London and he was agreed within a second uh, and uh, the lecture was very, uh, very enlightening. Thank you, Miranda, for all your time. I also like to thank a member of the audience coming all the way from different parts of the globe, I would say, uh, and make this event a success. I'd like to introduce some future links to India, which I have done already, but I will uh, speak again. Uh, without um, uh, those who are present in Skype, on the other end of the Skype, Mr. Rantidev Sen Gupta for his uh, tireless work. Uh, he is a Nivedita scholar and he's, uh, he's working constantly to raise awareness about Sister Nivedita in India. Mr. Sen Gupta. I would like to thank Mrs. Archana Datta. Uh, she is uh, an ex-student of Sister Nivedita School to organize the teleca uh, direct telecast of this program to India through national channel Duradarshan. She was an ex-director uh, general of uh, uh, Duradarshan India and he has arranged, he actually asked me to upload this video uh, straight away so that it will be, be telecast as a dedicated program 
of a statue unveiling uh, in Dangan and sculpture unveiling. So um, a huge thanks to uh, Mrs. Archanandatta and everyone in Duradarshan. I spoke to Mr. Vivek uh, in uh, the Duradarshan, who is uh, the deputy director of uh, Duradarshan, and he is very keen. And he said that it's our privilege if we get to show this program to India on Independence Day. So thanks to them as well. They are not present in Skype or they are not present here, but I must thank them. <laughs> Finally, uh, the greatest thanks goes to artist and sculptor Mr. Shekhar Das, who has skillfully crafted the nice sculpture of our beloved sister. Mr. Das uh, was introduced through Skype, and um, I would like a uh, plea that uh, I know he has done it for free, but if we could um, put up some, uh, some donations for uh, his work, it would be really great. He didn't ask, I'm asking, uh, that will be uh, showing respect to him. I mean, I, we have already agreed the three families that uh, will try to, you know, it's, uh, it's just to show a little bit of respect to him. And um, thank you, Mr. Shekhar Das. Uh, can you show uh, your face uh, in the camera once more? And uh, that, uh, Mr. Das, I think he is there. Can we, we can all, yeah, he is in the corner. Um, so that uh, anybody else wants to um, say thanks or speak, or if I miss anyone, I did, it was not intentional. I want to thank all of um, you. Um, oh, it's, it's my friends and families, Abunti, uh, that beautiful dance, and Soma. Uh, they also came, and the children, little children, all my friends and family. And last but not the least, my husband um, to support me, all my endeavors. And these are all, we in Bengali we call, but you know, it's, it means uh, you're just doing out of passions. But, uh, but he always supports all my endeavors. I must say th thanks to my husband and my son. Um, and um, that brings to the end of our program. I know I love to be waiting, but before that, I would like, I would request Jean to say a few words to, to conclude the program. Just say uh, anything, maybe Vande Mataram, <laughs> that will be fine. Thank you, Jean. Thank you, Jane. That brings us to the end of the program. And Christine kindly arranged the lunch, isn't it, Christine? Yes, so uh, the lunch will be ready. And um, so can we just disconnect the Skype now? And goodbye. And uh, I wanted to sing Janagana Mana, but there are a lot of uh, rules and regulations about singing national anthem. So uh, if we all agree, Swamiji, uh, Swami Sarvalakanandaji, are you okay to sing? Yes. Uh, so can we all stand up for our national anthem on the, on the other side of the Skype as well? Can we all stand up please for the national anthem?
কিন্তু হিয়ার জয়ন্ত জয়ন্ত আমরা জনগণ মন একটু গাইব তোমরা সবাই একটু দাঁড়াও সো উই ক্যান অল জয়েন টুগেদার ইন দিস সং তো এটা একটু অন করে দিই সাউন্ডটা সো উই উইল অল সিং টুগেদার আই উইল I'll say one, two, three, and then we all start. I know that the words are not but there are a lot of people who know the words. So can we sing Jono Gono Mono? This is our 15th August and very auspicious day, our 7th, 7th, the 69th um, anniversary of our independence. So can we start? Uh, one, two, three. Jan Gan Man Dhinayak Jaya He भारत भाग विधाता पंजाब सिंध गुजरात मराठा द्राविड उत्कल वंग बिंध हिमाचल यमुना गंगा उच्छल जन भितरंग तब शुभ नामे जागे तब शुभ आशीष मागे गाहे तब जय गाथा जन गण मंगल गायक जय हे भारत भाग विधाता जय हे जय हे जय हे जय 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 कैन यू ऑल सीट नाउ दिस सॉन्ग स्टिल ब्रिंग्स द गुड एंड बम्स इन आवर इन आवर ब्लड एंड फ्लैश नो मैटर हाउ मेनी इयर्स वी स्टे अब्रॉड बट स्टिल इट ब्रिंग्स टीयर्स टू अस एम वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कनेक्ट द स्काई नाउ दिस इज ओनली द बिगिनिंग ऑफ अ बिग जर्नी थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू ऑल